the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. In the beginning, when the Most High created Adam and Eve, the Most High gave them the ability to see into the heavens. Both Adam and Eve can see the angels singing while they were in the garden. Adam and Eve were spirit beings before their fall. After the fall of the first man and woman, the Most High closed their spiritual eyes. Instead of having eyes to see the angels, they now had eyes of the flesh that could no longer see into the heavens, nor behold the angels of the Most High. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou was under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. Adam and Eve also obtained a body of flesh to accommodate their new living conditions. The Most High didn't only give them eyes of the flesh, but a body of flesh as well. The scriptures in the Bible said Satan convinced Eve that if she eats from the tree, they would become like gods, knowing good and evil. Their eyes would open to discern between good and evil. Israelites, did you see how Satan lied to Eve when he said their eyes would open and they would be like gods? When Adam and Eve transgressed, they lost their bright nature. Their eyes became open only to accommodate their new nature of flesh. The Most High stripped them of their bright nature and they could no longer see into the heavens as a consequence to listening to Satan. Adam and Eve didn't become like gods after eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The spirit of death now had control over Adam, Eve, and their descendants. Because they listened to the God of this world, Satan became their prince. The Satans now rule over Adam and his seed. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, Neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again, he said, inasmuch as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. The Most High warned Adam and Eve and said to them, if they eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would surely die. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Once Adam and Eve transgressed the laws in paradise, they suffered a spiritual death. Now they had a body of flesh and they could no longer see into the heavens. The Satans became king over Adam, Eve, and their descendants, just as you heard in the scriptures. Satan said he would wage war against Adam and his seed. Israelites, that is how we got caught between the battle of good and evil. Israelites, that is why the Most High assigned a righteous prince over his people and all the righteous to battle against the prince of this world to redeem the righteous. Our redemption has nothing to do with the Most High becoming flesh and everyone who believe in him will not perish. Our deliverance have nothing to do with religious fairy tales. 
the Satans use religious doctrines to keep you in spiritual bondage. The Most High will use the great Prince Michael to redeem the righteous of Adam and Eve descendants. The Prince of this world is battling against the Prince of life. This is the way the Most High selected to redeem his people. Sin gave the Satans access to us. The dominion given to us was hijacked by the Satans. That is why the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. When the Most High confronted Adam and Eve after they sinned, they could only hear the voice of the Most High and felt his presence in the garden, but they could not see the one that spoke with them. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. When the Most High created us, he wanted his creation to know him. That is why he showed Enoch everything about his creation. He made Enoch write everything down and command him to preserve the writings. The Most High command Enoch to give his writings to his children so that they can distribute the information throughout the generations. Israelites, it wasn't the Most High's intention to put us here on earth without having any knowledge of who he is and how he operates. The Most High is very open with his people. The reason there's a lot of controversy and conspiracy, the synagogue of Satan changed history and manipulated the handwritings of our ancestors. The Satans have flipped everything upside down to cause confusion. If the Satans did not use the workers of iniquity to manipulate the scriptures and change history, everyone would know their bloodline, their inheritance, and most importantly, we would know the Most High. Another reason there is so much confusion, the Satans have the ability to transform themselves into angels of light. The synagogue of Satan also transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The fallen angels can transform themselves into politicians, presidents, kings, police officers, judges, actors, actresses, musicians, executives, doctors, lawyers, and pastors to deceive you in the flesh. The scriptures say they can take many forms to defile you. Some will transform into a person you love to defile you. The synagogue of Satan make their corporations and religious institutions appear to be corporations with great morals and outstanding business practices. Yet they hide their idols in their logos and feed you poisonous food. In addition, perform satanic rituals behind the scenes to steal your money. The most popular religious institutions are overrun with workers of iniquity that practice sorcery to bound you spiritually. Israelites, this is why spiritual warfare is ongoing. It's extremely important for you to engage in spiritual warfare. The Satans is waging war with you and they want to destroy as many of you as they possibly can. You must be vigilant. The first man and woman made a decision that altered our way of life. This decision was solely on Adam and Eve. The Most High gave them the ability to choose what they wanted to do. Out of their own free will, they transgressed the laws of the Most High in the garden. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgress of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalt state such as I have so that I deprive you of the bright nature in which you then were, and I made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. Over the years, I've heard a lot of doctrines of many blaming Adam and Eve for their poor decisions. Yet many are making poor choices in this generation, and they cannot see their error. A lot of people blame the first man and woman for everything. Not too many are taking responsibility for their actions right now. In the indigenous black community, many people are participating in shifting blame. If true repentance took place in the indigenous black community, we would triumph and over the heads of our enemies until the day we are delivered. After the fall of the first man and woman, a major alteration took place in Adam and Eve and their children. You heard for yourself Adam saying to Eve that they cannot see like they did in the garden. And to this day, as their descendants, our eyes are closed and we cannot look into the heavens and see the angels singing. 
Some of us are nearsighted and our vision have become impaired. With our vision impaired with the eyes of the flesh, life became difficult for us. It's through this difficulty the enemy used against us to cause a separation between the Most High and us. Israelites, it's very important that you understand we are not operating in our true nature. The Most High gave us flesh to live here on earth. Our true nature is nothing like we are experiencing today. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions, and all flesh that require food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. Yet if thou hadst submitted, and had been obedient to me, and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels, that are full of wickedness, and thou camest to this earth, that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. As you heard in the scriptures, we are altered beings. The divine nature Adam and Eve once had was taken from them. The scriptures in the Bible said our eyes were open, but truly our eyes became closed. When Adam and Eve repented and shed their blood and offered their blood to the Most High to find forgiveness of sin, The Most High accepted their offering and made a covenant with Adam and Eve to redeem them and the righteous of their descendants. The Satans have taken our journey to redemption, transform our salvation to religion. Today, everyone is looking to religion for salvation instead of the Most High for their deliverance. Israelites, the Most High forgave Adam and Eve and made a covenant to save them and their seed. The Most High created many ways to communicate with his people. Now that Adam and Eve could no longer see the angels, the angels had to transform themselves into the likeness of men for Adam and Eve to see them in the flesh. This is why the scriptures say to us, be careful on how you treat strangers because we may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. We see throughout the scriptures of the angels transforming themselves into the image of men to speak with our ancestors in the flesh. This was one of the many ways the Most High communicated with his people during the generation of Adam. The Most High sent his angels who are messengers to speak to Adam and all of the generations before the coming of the Messiah. The word of God was with our fathers throughout the generations. It was the word of the Most High that explained everything to Adam. The word of God informed Adam of the flood as well as to everything that would transpire until the end. O my son, hereafter shall a flood come and overwhelm all creatures and leave out only eight souls. But, O my son, let those whom it will leave out from among your children at that time Take my body with them out of this cave, and when they have taken it with them, let the oldest among them command his children to lay my body in a ship until the flood has been assuaged and they come out of the ship. Then they shall take my body and lay it in the middle of the earth shortly after they have been saved from the waters of the flood. And now, O Seth, my son, behold, I have revealed unto thee hidden mysteries, which God had revealed unto me. Keep my commandment for thyself and for thy people. The angels would appear to our ancestors in a form of a man to deliver a message from the Most High to his people. Before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, the Most High sent three angels, the scriptures describe as men. When Abraham saw them, he greeted them and he treated them with kindness. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. There were many instances in the scriptures where our ancestors didn't know they were interacting with an angel. On many occasions, the angels took on the appearance of men to participate in great battles the Israelites encountered. The captain to the army of the Most High often appear in the form of a man holding a sword to our people. 
Joshua saw him in that manner. The donkey and Balaam saw the angel of the Lord having an appearance of men and holding a sword. King David also saw the angel of the Lord that had an appearance of a man holding a sword over Jerusalem. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? Throughout the scriptures, our ancestors interacted with the angels. Some of our ancestors would hear a great voice. Some describe a thunder coming from the heavens speaking to the people. The generation before the coming of the Messiah saw great miracles the angels did on the behalf of the Most High. One in particular, the parting of the sea when the Israelites were delivered from the land of bondage, Mizraim. The Most High sent the angel to guide his people during the day and night. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Another way the Most High communicate with his people is through the spirit realm, your dream life. If you didn't know by now, majority of the scriptures are dreams and visions our ancestors had. The prophets of old wrote down everything they saw to preserve their visions and dreams. Our father Jacob communicated with the Most High in the spirit realm. Jacob depend greatly on his dreams and visions. The Most High guided Jacob via his dreams and visions. It was through a dream the Most High showed Jacob how he would transfer the wealth of Laban to him. It was through a dream the Most High warned Joseph to take the Messiah to Mizraim to escape King Herod, who wanted to kill every male child that was two and under. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Israelites, Many prophecies you have heard, especially end-time prophecies, were dreams and visions seen by our ancestors. The book of Revelation is a very good example to help further your understanding. Everything John saw was a dream and vision. The Most High showed him in a spirit realm. The prophecies written in the book of Revelation are pending events that are prophesied to come to pass in the last days. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Israelites, it's very important that you pay attention to your dreams and visions because the Most High will communicate with you there. The spirit realm show you what the eyes of the flesh cannot see. As you can see, Israelites, the Most High communicate with us through his angels as well as the spirit realm. When the Messiah became flesh, the generation alive during his time on earth had the opportunity to be taught by him. They had access to the truth without any alterations. When the Prince of Life became flesh, his mission was to fulfill everything written about him. The Messiah shed his blood, just like Adam and Eve shed their blood to find forgiveness of sins. The Messiah's other mission was to remove the power death had over us. After the Messiah was hung on a tree, the Prince of Life descended into hell. He took the keys from the Satans who had control over death. The Satans were the key holders for hell. I saw the key holders and guards of the gates of hell standing 
like great serpents, and their faces like extinguished lamps, and their eyes of fire, their sharp teeth. And I saw all the Lord's works, how they are right, while the works of men are some good and others bad. And in their works are known those who lie evilly. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The Messiah's mission was to take the power of death from the Satans, as well as making a way for us to find forgiveness of sins. The Most High did not in any way intended for the people to start worshiping the Messiah and transform him into a god. The Messiah had specific missions to complete while on earth. That is why the amount of time he was a man was brief on earth. Once the Messiah completed his mission on earth, he went back to the heavens. The generation that knew the Messiah as Yahshua were blessed to have a teacher that knew the truth of the Most High's words. The generation alive when Yahshua walked the earth saw his divine nature. The angels have the ability to perform great miracles on the behalf of the Most High, the Father. The Most High will command it and the angels will execute it. The generation alive when the Messiah walked the earth believed he was a prophet. Before Yahshua became flesh, he was the holy angel Michael. The scripture said he didn't take the nature of an angel while dwelling on earth. He took the nature of a man, one from Abraham's seed. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Despite of taking on the nature of man, the Messiah still had his divine nature that allowed him to perform great miracles in the sight of the people alive in that generation. The scripture said in the book of John that there were many miracles performed by the Messiah that wasn't written in the scriptures. Israelites, we are the generation alive after the Messiah fulfilled everything written in the laws concerning him. We are the generation that operates solely in the spirit. The scripture said that the Most High wants the true worshipers to serve and worship him in spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Our generation only heard of the great miracles done in the previous generations. Miracles such as the parting of the sea, hearing a great thundering voice from heaven, speaking to the people. When the presence of the Most High descend on Mount Sinai and the countless great miracles the Most High did through his angels, he sent to help his people. Our generation could only hope to have seen such great miracles. We are living at a time that requires great faith and walking in the spirit. Not too many Israelites know what it means to walk in the spirit. Many claim to be awakened and serve the Father, but they have no idea what it means to walk in the Spirit. How have you returned if you don't know how to walk in the Spirit, as well as recognize when you're being guided by the Most High in the Spirit? Before the Messiah completed his mission on earth, he said to his disciples that he wasn't going to leave them comfortless. The Messiah said he will pray to the Father to send us another comforter. That comforter was the Holy Spirit. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit is the comforter the Most High sent to comfort us after the departure of the Messiah on earth. The Messiah said the Holy Spirit would abide in us forever. The comforter dwell with us and is supposed to help us. Having the Holy Spirit operating in you, as well as you being able to recognize the Holy Spirit in your everyday life is a key sign that you're a part of the remnant. Everyone who belongs to the Most High, the Father, will have the Holy Spirit operating in them and guiding them into all truth forever. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. From the generation that saw the Messiah ascend back to the Father, and all the generations that follow is supposed to have the Holy Spirit abide in them forever. The Holy Spirit is supposed to guide us into all truth. Before the fall of Adam and Eve, they had the Spirit of the Most High operating in them. Adam said he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The bright nature the Most High took away from Adam and Eve and gave them eyes of the flesh was the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, the Most High breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living being. And of thy good will, O Lord, thou made us both with bodies of a bright nature, and thou made us two, one, and thou gave us thy grace, and did fill us with praises of the Holy Spirit, that we should be neither hungry nor thirsty, nor know what sorrow is, nor yet faintness of heart, neither suffering, fasting, nor weariness. After the Messiah completed his mission on earth, the Holy Spirit returned once the Messiah prayed to the Father to send us a comforter. There is no way you could serve the Father without his Spirit. Israelites, in order to walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has to guide you into all truth. Remember, it's the truth that shall make you free, not doctrine. One of the many roles of the Holy Spirit is to reveal the affairs of the Most High to us. Only the Spirit of the Most High that knows the Father. The high-level workers of iniquity and religion don't know the truth. The workers of iniquity as well as all who follow the beast culture cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Israelites, the wicked don't know the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they cannot receive the Holy Spirit to speak truth. If the high-level workers of iniquity with prestige positions in religion don't have the Spirit of the Most High, why would you follow their doctrines? Only the Holy Spirit that can tell us the affairs of the Most High. The Spirit of the Most High search all things, the deep things of the Most High, and reveal it to us. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. So many of you live by every word the workers of iniquity speak. A lot of you are fascinated by the wisdom of this world. The workers of iniquity are able to bound many of you because you believe the lies that comes out of their mouths. Their doctrines of devils are doctrines that does not uphold the righteousness of the Most High. Telling the people that the laws of the Most High are done away with is a doctrine that doesn't uphold the truth of the Most High's words. The high-level workers of iniquity and religion don't know the Spirit of the Most High. They have the Holy Ghost, which are familiar spirits that are misleading them with lies. We are supposed to depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us. The Most High will order our steps via the Holy Spirit. The workers of iniquity made many of you depend on your pastors, teachers, evangelists, and the many countless people with prestige titles that establish their righteousness. We are supposed to depend on the Holy Spirit that abide in us for truth and guidance. Israelites, this is why our spiritual journey is a personal relationship with the Father. The scripture said we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We don't need to depend on other people to know the Most High. The Most High gave us the ability to come to Him, to be taught by Him. That is why we are at different stages on our spiritual journey. The Satans use the Holy Ghost to deceive many of you into using familiar spirits to guide you and prophesy to you. That is why medians, wizards, and witches are popular in the beast culture. Such people use familiar spirits to get information about a person. Your favorite pastor in religion and high-level workers of iniquity who are members of the synagogue of Satan use familiar spirits to deceive you. Familiar spirits are spirits that are familiar with you and your family. They are ancestral spirits that travel in your bloodline, monitoring everything in your family. Familiar spirits are also monitoring spirits as well. They monitor you and report back to the one that sent them. The workers of iniquity use the information obtained by the familiar spirits to prophesy to you about your life. Remember when the Most High stopped speaking to King Saul? Saul sent his people to find a woman with familiar spirit to get information about the affairs of the Most High. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. The spirit that took on the likeness of Samuel was a familiar spirit that dwelt in Saul's bloodline. Both Samuel and Saul were Israelites. 
This familiar spirit took on the likeness of Samuel to speak lies to King Saul. Familiar spirits will appear to be speaking truth, but it's only a deception. Israelites, you should never seek the kingdom of darkness to find out about the affairs of the Most High. You have the Holy Spirit to tell you about the affairs of the Most High. The workers of iniquity use familiar spirits to speak half-truth to gain your trust. The power that is operating in these false prophets and teachers are the dark powers of this world. The scriptures say you shouldn't seek anyone with a familiar spirit. The Most High will cut you off from your people if you consult a person with a familiar spirit. Judah testified to his children that they would follow them that had a familiar spirit and they would listen to their doctrines, which many who profess to be from the tribe of Judah are doing in the awakening and out of the awakening today. Many Israelites don't have discernment because they don't use the Holy Spirit. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries, which ye shall practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar spirits, diviners and demons of error. Ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. King Saul died because he was rebellious and he consulted a person that had a familiar spirit for truth. No Israelite that served a father would seek a person with a familiar spirit for truth. The reason so many of our people perish, they don't partner with the Holy Spirit, they neglect the Holy Spirit. When they ignore the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High becomes dormant in them. When the Holy Spirit lay dormant, you're unable to learn the truth. Familiar spirits are encouraging Israelites to study to show themselves approved. They go looking into the heathens' chambers of lies to find truth. Some Israelites don't look within to get the answers that they are looking for from the Spirit of the Most High. Some Israelites can't seem to understand that it's the Holy Spirit that will guide them into all truth. Because so many cannot discern, they are forever learning but never could come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's a lot of Israelites who are learning in the awakening, but they can never seem to come to the knowledge of the truth. When the truth is spoken, they deny the truth because they cannot see. The prince of this world have blind their eyes. Because so many Israelites fail to use the Holy Spirit, they are being tossed around with the wild doctrines of devils from the workers of iniquity. Israelites, don't mistake the Holy Spirit for the Holy Ghost, which are familiar spirits. Have you noticed in the church when a person is supposedly under the power of the Holy Ghost, they act erratic and out of control. They appear to be demon possessed instead of being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Most High is not going to cause you to act out of control and jumping everywhere like you have no sense. What you and I have witnessed in the church when the Holy Ghost come upon the people is demon possession. When the Holy Spirit came and everyone who gathered in the room received the Holy Spirit, the scriptures say they began to speak in their native tongues. None of the people were acting crazy and falling on the ground as if they lost control of themselves. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. When the Holy Spirit came and the people started to speak in their native tongues, the people were astonished and assumed that the people who revert to speaking in their native language were drinking. None of the disciples and the people who gathered with them in the room passed out and falling on the floor when the Holy Spirit came. Israelites, the voice of the Most High is a still small voice, very gentle and quiet. If your mind is preoccupied, you will miss what the Spirit of the Most High is saying to you. If you're acting like a lunatic, you won't hear anything the Holy Spirit is saying to you. When the Holy Ghost come upon the people in the church, the complete opposite takes place. The people are passing out and become disoriented. The Holy Spirit would not make you appear as if you've been demonically possessed. The Holy Ghost are possessing the people in the church. Israelites, you won't find the Holy Spirit in the heathens' worship buildings. You are the temple that housed the Spirit of the Most High. 
not the temples of the heathens that are built from man's hands. The Most High doesn't live in temples that are built by the hands of men. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Israelites, do not let the Holy Spirit become dormant in you. Without the Spirit of the Most High, you will believe every deception from the Satans. That is why a lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are perishing in religion. They are neglecting the Holy Spirit. Israelites, the time has come for you to partner with the Holy Spirit to uncover truth that will make you free. The scripture said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I have yet to see the people who proclaim to receive the Holy Ghost receive power in the church. I just see a bunch of people pass out or out of energy from being tossed around by familiar spirits in the church. The power you should receive from the Holy Spirit is to be able to rebuke devils, heal the sick, having discernment, as well as being able to find truth in the altered scriptures. These are some of the power you receive when you utilize the comforter, the most high sent. You will obtain wisdom that will amaze the people. Many will question how you have such deep understanding to the word of the most high, as well as your faith. Israelites, the Holy Spirit is also the fire of the most high. When the Holy Spirit came, they saw tongues of fire resting on each person. Israelites, you need the fire of the Most High in spiritual warfare. That is how you will destroy devils and get them to flee from you. The fire of the Most High is a consuming fire. The Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from afar, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. Israelites, you must use the fire of the Most High to fight back against the unclean spirits that torments you. That tongue of fire will set your enemies ablaze. The Israelites who don't utilize the power they receive from the Holy Spirit will live a defeated life. The Holy Spirit seal you for the day of redemption. That is why I said to you earlier, if you're a part of the remnant, you will have the Holy Spirit and you will know how to utilize the Holy Spirit. Many Israelites in the awakening are grieving the Holy Spirit with their lack of faith and unbelief. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. In the past few messages, I inform you about the danger of unbelief. A lot of our people are perishing because they can't seem to understand the deep things of the Most High. Although the scripture said all the secrets would be made manifest and everything done in darkness would come to light, a lot of Israelites continue to struggle with the deep truth being revealed. The Most High said if you reject knowledge, he will reject you and your children. Israelites, it's very important that you don't allow the spirit of unbelief to cause you to miss the kingdom. A lot of you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit unawares. Some of you may ask how. When you deny the truth that is being spoken by the Holy Spirit of the Most High in the awakening, a lot of you don't recognize the Holy Spirit speaking through the select few that were chosen. The word that is being spoken that are coming from the Holy Spirit, you reject and you call the person bringing the message a liar. When you do this, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The scripture said all sin will be forgiven, but when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that sin will not be forgiven. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. A lot of Israelites in the awakening is guilty of the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The reason I say this, when I told you about the identity of the real Messiah, and I started to show you what is hidden in the scriptures that was taught to me by the Holy Spirit, a lot of you rejected the truth and some called me a liar and slandered my name. Some of you allowed the spirit of unbelief and pride cause you to dismiss the truth that I've shared with you. 
When you reject the truth that came from the Holy Spirit operating in me, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It wasn't me you called a liar and slander. It was the Holy Spirit you slander and called a liar. Remember when the Israelites in the generation of Samuel rejected Samuel for leading over them and Samuel was sad? The Most High said to Samuel, it's not you they have rejected, it's me they have rejected, that I might not reign over them as king. The father went on to say they have been rejecting him from the beginning to serve other gods. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Israelites, that is why you have to be careful with what you say and how you react. Not everyone that speaks truth that you find to be contrary to what you were taught in religion is lying to you. The spirit of rejection is causing many to sin against the Most High. The chosen are always being rejected, just like the real Messiah was rejected. The scripture said, you can speak against the Messiah and your sins will be forgiven. The Messiah in the eyes of many people is God in the flesh. Many of you uphold the Messiah in high esteem. Some of you believe if you reject the Messiah, you will not make it into the kingdom. The scripture said, you can speak against the Messiah and your sins will be forgiven. But the moment you speak against the Holy Spirit, your sin will not be forgiven. Not today, not ever. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost... It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Be careful, Israelites. Stop letting the Satans deceive you and cause you to sin. If the Most High comes to speak with me in the spirit realm and reveal truth to me, is that not the word of the Most High? Remember, the scriptures are dreams and visions by our ancestors who preserve their visions and dreams by writing them down. Today, we consider their writings the word of the Most High. Israelites, the Most High is still speaking through his people. When the few that are chosen are speaking and doing the will of the Most High, and you make it your life purpose to come against the message due to your lack of knowledge, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit that is speaking through that person exposing truth. Israelites, don't perish because you believe the Most High is not using the daughters of Zion, or you allow the Satans to deceive you by believing the slander and lies said about the person delivering the message. The Satans are crafty, and you have to learn how they war against you. Don't let the unclean spirits misguide you. If you go to the Father, he will confirm everything. Israelites, don't perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Ever since the Most High started to unmask Jesus with truth, the Father revealed the identity of the real Messiah. A lot of you were aware of this truth. Some of you have heard the identity of the Messiah, but you ignored it because it wasn't popular in the church. The Holy Spirit had been nudging at your heart when you were worshiping the Messiah as the Most High. Some of you felt uncomfortable, but you kept following the doctrines taught to you by the workers of iniquity. When the Most High began to expose the truth on this channel, a lot of you became relieved and said, I knew something was wrong, but you couldn't quite figure it out until you came across this channel. The Holy Spirit was nudging at your heart to get you to come to the realization of the truth. When you finally obeyed, some of you received the confirmation that you were looking for. Confirmation from the Holy Spirit comes with an absolute assurance. Israelites, the Holy Spirit is not going to violate your free will. If you're a part of the remnant, you will start to distinguish between your voice and the voice of the Holy Spirit that abide in you. The remnant knows the voice of the Most High. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
Israelites, there will be truth the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that you won't find in the scriptures, in a book, or anywhere in the world. The Holy Spirit can reveal important information to you about your life. The Holy Spirit can give you great details about a prophecy that is coming that is hidden in the scriptures. When the Holy Spirit revealed deep truth that only you will know, it's up to you to believe the Most High. When the Bible said Abraham was found to be faithful, when the Most High said he would become a father to many nations, all of his circumstances were negative and didn't appear to correspond with the blessings the Most High gave to him. Our father Abraham just believed the Most High and it was credited to him as having great faith. Who, against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham didn't have anyone to give him confirmation when the Most High said to him he would become a father to many nations. He trusted the Most High and gave him glory. Likewise, Israelites, the Most High will reveal truth that will seem odd to you via his Spirit. You're not going to find any confirmation from anywhere but by the Holy Spirit. You have to utilize great faith. That is what walking in the Spirit is all about having a personal relationship with the Father, to know that despite what the flesh is saying, you have an absolute assurance that the one who promised is faithful. The word of the Most High would not return to him void. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us into all truth. That is the only way you will know truth. Israelites, don't neglect the Holy Spirit. The truth you're learning in the awakening would not correspond with the doctrines in religion. You must purge those doctrines out of your mind and allow the Most High to renew your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Most High is communicating with us in many ways. Despite the workers of iniquity altering the scriptures and changing history, the Holy Spirit will see to it that you find the truth. Israelites, the time has come for you to trust the Most High. Serve the Father with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. The Most High will direct your path via His Spirit if you acknowledge Him and put your faith in Him. We are the generation that must operate in the Spirit and in truth. Israelites, learn how to walk in the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can seal you for the day of redemption. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones.